So polyarticular GIA, five or, uh, five or more joints in the first six months, um, 30 to 40 percent of GIA cases if you include both the rheumatoid factor negative and rheumatoid factor positive. Again, this autoimmune disease is dominated by girls three to one. Uh, there are two peaks. There's an early peak of the rheumatoid factor negative kids who are probably, and, and why the, the one set of criteria have lumped these kids together, uh, are very much like the oligos, even though they have more than four joints. And there's the later onset that can be either rheumatoid factor positive like RA or a larger subtype uh, that are RF negative, although some of those kids are probably misdiagnosed polys that probably belong in either the psoriatic or anthocytis related group. Nevertheless, they can have both small and large joints. Um, cervical spine involvement uh, is unfortunately can be part of this, although treatment now is pretty good at preventing significant damage there. TMJ again is common, some of the larger joints too. Um, because of the TMJ involvement, they can get micronathia or small jaws. Uh, they can get cervical spine fusion if undiagnosed and untreated. Occasionally they will present with fatigue. So these kids, not just the joints, they can have uh, systemic features as well. Rheumatoid nodules, like you see in adults, are rare in childhood, but this is the one subtype you may see them, for example, over the knuckles in those who are RF positive. Um, Again, this is basically adult RA presenting in adolescence if it's RF positive. The rheumatoid factor itself is a poor prognostic find, uh, as is the cyclic peptide antibody. They get erosive disease, so these joints get damaged. And the polys, uh, about 30% will be ANA positive. The oligos, it's more like 70%, but this is still kind of higher than the general population, which actually is around 20 to 25%. Uveitis is not common in RF-positive groups, but if the child's ANA and under 7, again, you want to screen them frequently.